Many people don't know that Excel has built-in coding languages that help us automate repetitive processes. In this video, I'm going to share five macros that will save you a ton of time every day and make your spreadsheets easier to use. So let's get to it. All right, in this first example, we're going to look at a common data cleanup scenario where we need to copy down or fill down these company names into all the blank cells below. Now, the manual approach to this, there's actually several manual ways to do this. Probably the easiest is select all cells, hit Control G on the keyboard, then we're going to go into special here, and we're going to select just the blank cells, and then we're going to type a formula, which is equals, and then just reference the cell above here, and hit Control Enter, hold Control and hit Enter, and that's going to apply that formula all the way down. And then what we'd want to do is go select the entire column and uh, copy and paste values. So that's a multi-step process, of course, and we want to just do that with a click of a button. So I'm going to, again going to select the entire column here. I'm going to go up to my macros tab, and this is a ribbon tab that has a bunch of macros that I use commonly. And for this one, I have a macro called fill down. So I'm just going to click this button, and it's prompting me if I want to do the fill down. I'll say yes, and that will go ahead and create the formula just instantly there to all of the selected cells. And then I'm prompted for the next step, which is to replace the formulas with values. And the only reason I have this in here is that this allows you to just double check that the formula was applied correctly in the cells. You could keep the formula if you wanted to by hitting no, but I'll go ahead and hit yes. And that again is going to replace that formula with values. And now we have values in each of these cells. All right, so let's take a look at the code here. We're going to go to developer tab, visual basic button, keyboard shortcut is alt F11. And within this workbook here, we have several code modules. I'll make this file available for free download and put a link in the description below. We're going to go into this fill down module. We can just double click that. And here we'll see the fill down blank cells macro. And the macro first shows a message box to prompt the user if they want to run the macro. I always recommend adding these to the beginning of any macro that's gonna make modifications to your workbook so you don't accidentally run the macro and make changes that you can't undo. And then it loops through all of the selected cells and for any of the blank cells, it just inputs this formula. And this is R1C1 notation. Just a little pro tip here. All Excel formulas in the background use R1C1 notation. Essentially, this is just referencing the row above with the negative one there and the cell in the same column because there's no numbers after C. And then we have another prompt for replacing the formulas and this line of code will replace the formulas with values. And of course, you can take these code modules and drag them into your personal macro workbook. And throughout this video, you'll notice that I'm using this My Macros tab where I have all these macro buttons that are stored in my personal macro workbook. And this allows me to run my macros on any workbook that I have open. I have a separate video that explains this setup step by step, and I'll link that up in the description below. The next macro we're going to look at will also make your sheets look nicer. So if you've seen in my videos in the past, you know that I like to have this title up here, this header at the top of each sheet. And this can take several steps to add this in and do all of the formatting here in this header row. So of course I have a macro that will do that with the click of a button. I'm gonna jump back over to this sheet that does not have that title yet. Go up to my macros here, and I have this macro button called sheet title. Go ahead and run that, hit yes. And that's going to insert all the rows and columns here and add the title. And of course, the title is the sheet name down here, but you can quickly change that if you'd want. So now I'll hit Alt F11 to jump into the VB editor and we'll look at this code. We can double click the sheets module here to view the code for the format sheet title. Up here at the top, of course, we have our message box again. We also have a few lines of code for formalities to just make sure only one sheet is selected and also exit out of cut copy mode in case we have anything copied to the clipboard. And then there's just lines of code here to insert the rows and make all of the formatting changes. And of course, you could change any of these if you want your sheet title or formatting to look different. One thing I noted up here at the top of the macro is that I did use macro recorder code for this. So for all of these uh, formatting lines of code here and all of these properties, I just got all of this from the macro recorder. And that's a great way to get code, especially for colors on the color palette. The next macro is great for navigating large workbooks. So again, on the My Macros tab, I'm going to click the Table of Contents button. I'll say yes, and that's instantly going to add this table of contents sheet to the front of the workbook. And this contains clickable links to each sheet in the workbook. 
So I'll hit Alt F11 to jump into the VB editor. And this one is in the TOC module. And this is the table of contents macro. And this macro, of course, has more options and features to it, more lines of code. Uh, one option is you can skip hidden sheets if you don't want hidden sheets displayed on the table of contents. And really the bulk of the macro happens here where we loop through each sheet in the workbook and then add the hyperlinks. And another nice feature of this macro is the backlink. So down here at the bottom, there's a cell that contains the table of contents link. And you can just hit Control C to copy this and then go over to any of your other sheets and paste it in a blank cell. And so this is going to link back to the table of contents. And so we can jump back here and then again, click this to jump back. So it makes navigating your workbook very quick and easy for the users of your file. Now, as your sheets change, maybe you rename a sheet or here I'll just make a duplicate copy of the sheet or even delete sheets. All you need to do to update the table of contents is just rerun the macro. So again, just click this button, rerun the macro. That's going to update everything here. And now we have this new sheet listed. I have another macro called Table of Contents Gallery, which creates these clickable image tiles to each sheet in the workbook. This will make it even easier to navigate your workbooks, and I'll put a link to this one in the description below. If you're interested in learning more about VBA, we have an in-depth training program called the VBA Pro Course. This is a beginner to advanced level course where you'll learn everything from the very basics of the VBA coding language all the way up to automating complex budgeting and reporting processes. It's based on real world scenarios that I've used to save companies thousands of dollars and hours. I'll put a link in the description where you can learn more and join us. This next macro saves a ton of time when formatting charts. So here I have a pivot table and I'm just going to insert a standard pivot chart, clustered column chart, and we'll hit OK. And once we have this chart, I have to do several steps to clean it up to get it to, to look the way I like. First thing I typically do is just hide all the field buttons on the chart. Then I go into here, I turn the grid lines and the legend off. I also turn off the primary vertical axis, add data labels here, and then I'll right click in here, format series, and adjust the gap width. And that's of course, if I remember to do all of these steps, and then I also have to give it a descriptive title. So of course I have a macro that's gonna make this easier. I'm just gonna delete this chart. I'll just insert a new one so we can see what that uh, looks like with all the default settings here. We'll select the chart, we go my macros, and here I have a button called pivot chart makeover. We'll go ahead and run that. And that's going to take all of those same steps I just took, including adding a descriptive title here based on the contents of the pivot table here. And it does all of that with just a click of a button. So let's take a look at the code for this one. It's in the makeover module here, and it's called pivot chart makeover. And it's a relatively simple macro. I actually just got all of this code from the macro recorder, and it just applies all of the properties there for those different settings that I applied in the chart. For the chart title, I have a separate macro uh, that's called down here at the bottom. So this is the auto title pivot chart macro kind of a mouthful. And this will just look at all of the different fields that are used in the pivot table and build out that title. Again, you can use either of these macros independently, or you can use them together to just quickly make over your pivot charts. And finally, I have a very simple but very handy macro that'll save a backup copy of your workbook. Again, here on my My Macros tab, save backup copy. That's going to create a backup copy and just show the file path there. And here's what that looks like in the folder. The macro just creates a backup copy and adds today's date and time to the end of the file name. And again, jumping into the VB editor here, this one's called uh, in the backup module, it's called backup workbook. And it really just does some string parsing here to create that path, including the current date and time here. And then the save copy as method to save a copy of the workbook. I also have another macro here that will back up all open workbooks by looping through all of them. And I'll leave that one in here for you as well. So I'm curious to know which of these macros you'll be using first. Or if you have a different macro that you use every day, leave a comment below and let us know. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you wanna learn even more about automating Excel, then check out this video next. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.